Hello everyone, it's me again, your friendly director of studies and engineering here at Homerton, and I'm sat in my office, which is where I interview students and supervise current students. Now what will happen on the day is you'll have two interviews, both around 25 minutes long, and both with two different academics. One interview will be led by myself as the director of studies of admissions for engineering here at Homerton, and the other will be led by another Homerton fellow in engineering. You will be brought to the offices for your interviews by some of our student helpers here at the college. I will greet you at the door, welcome you in, and we will begin the interview process. Now I'll transfer over to Timos, another fellow in engineering here at Homerton, and he's going to run through the sort of questions that you might face at interview. Now for the next uh, few minutes, we'll go through a couple of questions, as uh, sample questions, what you might uh, find in an interview, not necessarily exactly the same questions, but similar type of questions, or, or the way the questions are presented to you. So first question uh, uh, could be something like that. So we have an airplane, it's flying, that has a mass M, and uh, the, uh, the speed with which it travels is U. That goes around the corner, of radius r and then uh, uh, as an aircraft it requires to fly so it requires uh, uh, to produce some lift which is produced by the flow going around the wings so this lift force is called l and then of course we have the acceleration due to gravity which is g so what we're looking for is an expression of the angle theta at which the airplane has to bank in order to go around the corner and that should be uh, an expression in terms of those quantities defined here m r uh, l and g you don't always need to know the numbers of uh, quantities but if they tell you you are given this quantity and uh, you can specify it later then you find an expression in terms of these uh, properties and that might be sometimes uh, we find that from students they find it a bit uh, uh, awkward in a way like they are not used to work on relationships without numbers so perhaps that is one one point you can keep in mind so then my next question is like to ask you to solve this problem. So typically, I mean, I'm confident this is based on knowledge that you already have, uh, but even if you don't at this moment, that's fine. We'll go through the problem later and then I'll explain what could be the approach. But then let's, I'll give you two, maybe three minutes to work on that. And then there will be a poll coming up soon with potential answers. And then you can choose A, B, C, or D, depending on your uh, findings. So please take those two, three minutes and I'll continue from there. Okay, so I'll switch now to the options. So then you can participate to the poll and then we'll go through the answer together. See the right answer is B. So you will need to apply um, uh, a few, couple of very fundamental principles uh, in order to approach the problem. We had an airplane here flying and then what was going around the corner with radius R. We had a lift force L, and then I can also sketch now the weight mg, and then that one was moving with velocity u. Now, before I go through the problem, let's see what we might need to recall from existing knowledge. So that might be uh, the circular motion. So if we have a piece of string where at the edge of this there is an object with mass m, and then that goes around to a circular motion with velocity u, then there will be a force on the string applied, or actually on the, on the object, where that will be equal to m u squared over r. And that is uh, the repeater force, okay? Now, that is one principle that we might need to recall and use to solve this problem. The other one, of course, is a second Newton's law where if we have an object with mass m 
and then there is a force applied to it, then this force will be equal to the mass times the acceleration. And if there is acceleration on that direction, that will be expressed through this uh, equation. But if there is no acceleration, then the sum of the forces along this direction should be equal to zero. And then perhaps another um, principle we will need to uh, recall is if we have an object where there is a force P applied along this direction, we have a force, say, M applied along this direction and another force N applied along this direction. There is an angle theta. Then we can take, we can resolve, we can take the components of the P force in order to express the equilibrium of that object. So then I will have P cosine theta to be equal to M and I will have P sine theta to be equal to M. So these are the three fundamental principles that we will need to consider to uh, uh, come to the solution to this problem. So then if I come to my actual problem, I'll switch the colors just to highlight that is the angle theta that we're looking for. Then what I see is the lift force is at an angle. So I would like to take the components of that. Now, this could be L horizontal, i call this. And then I will have here also L vertical. Now to express that component or its component in terms of L and theta, I will need to find uh, perhaps that angle, which is also theta. So, so if I can just interrupt. So as, as Tim is going through this, this would be basically what you'd be, as a candidate, you'd be explaining to us as you solve the problem, but obviously with our help. So at each stage, we could contribute by helping you and guiding you through, through that problem. Exactly. So then what I'm explaining now, and then the way I explain the steps I go through my logic to approach and express a solution to the problem, this is what we expect from you to listen to, to on, on the, um, uh, during the interview. Um, so then perhaps the hints or the help we could offer if a student uh, stuck to the question will be to ask you, you know, okay, how you can describe a circular motion, for example, or tell us uh, the second Newton's law and so on. So that will give you some hints and some confidence like, okay, you have the knowledge that is required to solve the problem. And then you will start approaching the problem and explaining uh, your thinking, uh, what you're doing um, uh, to come to the solution. Uh, okay, so then I've decomposed my force and then what I will do now, I can express that uh, the vertical and then my other equation will be uh, the horizontal. So I'm looking for angle theta, an expression. And what I can do actually, if I call this expression one, I call this expression two, I can divide those two. So then what I will find from here is tan theta. So I will need to do two over one now to get uh, uh, tan z, uh, u square over gr. And then if I resolve for theta, that will be uh, minus one, U squared over gr. And then that will make uh, option B. So well done for those that found the answer. Now, let's move on to the uh, second kind of sample question. Um, if the first one was kind of more engineering oriented, more mechanical type of analysis, uh, you would be potentially uh, uh, be asked like more mathematical uh, type of questions. Um, so let's find the solutions to this uh, uh, question. So again, I'll give you two to three minutes to go through your work and then I'll present the options so then you can participate to the poll. So the question was uh, find the answers on x squared plus four x squared equal to five. So one thing I could do is to replace x squared with y. So then that will give me y plus four y equal to five. That will become y squared minus five y 
plus four to be zero. And that is a quadratic to solve. So that will give two solutions. That will be minus b, which is five, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 25, minus four ac, minus 16, over two a, over two. That is five, plus minus square root of nine is three, over two. So then my two y solutions, uh, y1 will be a uh, four, and y2 will be one. And then you go back to find your x's. So uh, y1 is equal to x1 and two square. So that makes x1, two to be plus minus two. And then y2 is x three and four square. That means x three and four is equal to plus minus one. Okay. So thank you for that. Thank you, Timos. And it's it's worth noting that you may look at that and think, oh my God, that's so difficult. But actually, in the real thing, you you don't have to get it right, first of all. So in interviews, we'll constantly be giving you feedback to help you get to the point. And actually, quite frequently, if you get it completely wrong the first time, and then we give you information and you get it right again, that often shows us how you can assimilate information and use information like Miles was saying earlier. Um, yeah, and, you know, and as we go through, um, you know, if there may be points where you think, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, you know, and you should verbalize that. And actually, if you make a sensible point, it can actually be you know, a really good sign that you're actually critically evaluating everything as you progress. And so in a real interview, you would be talking through what you were thinking as you were going through all of these problems. So in some ways, an interview is a little bit like what you'll be tackling on a weekly basis in your supervisions with us is it's a sort of small number of you know myself with three two or three of you tackling problems like that and covering areas in the course content that you don't understand because it's all going to be new information and you are definitely going to need help to understand that and in an interview we give you that new information you try and apply it and we again help you to guide you through and we want to see that you're that you're using critical thinking if you are a good candidate, honestly, do not worry. You will do well. Um, it's, you should expect that you'll be given something that you do not know. That's for sure, yeah. And in a way, we have the difficult task to identify this uh, hidden talent, uh, mm -hmm. the candidates. Uh, you just have to be yourselves, really, and just perform and try to respond to your best of your understanding and your knowledge to any questions that we address to you.